four. Watch carefully, I'm going to draw an analogy right here. You bring down the four, if you find the, found the derivative, you'd have what now? Inside three x squared minus y. Two thirds. You agree with this? But then you don't end there, do you? Times derivative. I made it. <laughs> that wasn't the evil look yet. <laughs> Just wait. I have good ones. Uh, this is my train of thought. So easy. We bring it down because that's a general power. We bring down the exponent, we subtract one from it. Derivative of the inside. You're, you're familiar with this, right? You did homework on that, I hope. Yeah. If you didn't, well, Here's what you were supposed to do. <laughs> no. That's it. And you would get whatever the derivative is of that. And you would go 6x for that derivative, right? Yeah. Now, look at the comparison. This is a function in terms of x. That was a function in terms of x. This is raised to some power. That was raised to some power. So the derivative of this says this. It says, sure, you bring down that exponent and you subtract one from it. This is no different than what you've been doing. This is actually this right here. Are you with me? The problem is this. In this case, you had to multiply by the derivative of the inside here. Do you see what I'm talking about? What's the derivative of, what's the inside here? The y. The y. So we multiply by d, dx of y. Are you clear on that? Do you see the chain rule at work? Do you see that? You need to see this before you go any further. Raise your hand feel okay I'm getting that part of it. See where that's coming from. Now here's the weird thing. d, dx of y, that says, that says this. Check it out. That says the derivative of y with respect to x. Does it not? The derivative of y with respect to x. This says the derivative of y with respect to x, but then so does this. The derivative of y with respect to x. Doesn't that say the same thing here? <coughs> what does this represent? Derivative. That represents your derivative. You don't get it, do you? <laughs> no. The whole thing is... No. This is your derivative. You get this, that's the derivative of your y. Every time you take a derivative of y, you are going to get a dy dx. Because every time you take a derivative of y, you actually have a chain rule. Every time you have a chain rule, you take a derivative of the inside of it. Does that make sense to you? So every time, you're going to have a oh. d dx of y. This is the derivative of y. This is the derivative of y with respect to x, right? This is the derivative of y with respect to x. That is your derivative. Actually, if you think about it like variables, it's kind of weird, but d dx times y over 1, dy over dx. I don't know if that really works, but I just made it up. Ah. Uh, you get dy dx. That's what these two things mean. They're equivalent statements. Equals 0. Raise your hand if you're okay getting down that far. So here's the whole thing for you. You take a derivative of both sides with respect to x. Since you're treating y as a function of x, Every time you take a derivative of y, every time, you must get a dy dx. That's really the only important note for today. Everything else works the same. So each time you take a derivative, every time you de uh, derive y, you should have dy dx on account of the chain rule. Each time you derive y, you must get a dy dx on account of chain rule. Now, some people might be asking, well, Mr. Leonard, why don't we have a one for this. Why don't we have to use a chain rule here? Well, think about it. Think, just think for a second. If we did the same thing, you would do chain rule and you would get d dx of x, right? If you did the same thing, that's dx over dx. How much is dx over dx? One. Doesn't matter, right? That's why we don't have to do that. So for our dy dx, though, that is different. This is not the same variable as y. This is a function in terms of x, which means you need the dy dx there. And that's the whole crux of the implicit differentiation. Now, the only issue is, this stands for a derivative. This whole thing is all mixed up together. Can you solve for this? 
This was the calculus, the algebra is the rest of it. Get this by itself, and then you have your first derivative. Okay? Subtract this, not this, this. So you keep the y, keep the y, the three y squared on that side as well. Well, for right now, because it's being multiplied. So uh, subtract. Right. Now we divide. Okay. So now that's gone. If we do just a little bit of simplification, we get dy dx equals, looks like negative x squared over y squared, me. Can you make it down that far? That's our derivative. Notice how our derivative is also implicit. Our function was implicit, so that makes sense. Our derivative most of the times will be implicit as well. Now, could you have done this and got the same exact answer? The answer is yeah, but check this out. Check this out. If you did this explicitly, so if you solve this for y, which is that, which is that, if you take the derivative of this thing, are you going to get exactly this? No, because this won't have y's in it, this will. However, you can make a substitution. How much is y equal to? That. You can actually substitute that in. That will be the derivative there. Isn't that kind of interesting? Isn't that kind of cool? Do you see what I'm talking about? Did I go over your head right now? Hope not. Last part. Notice how if I were to solve that for y, y equals this, right? Y is here. So this would be that you can do, which is the derivative. If you would, to, if you do the derivative, try it on your own. See if I'm right. Pretty sure I am. Uh, but see if I am right. See if you can derive that. Cube root. And yeah, it's cube root. It's cube root. <laughs> do that. Get your to the negative three halves power. Oh, sorry, negative uh, two thirds power. That's going to be right here for you. Um, you're going to have your x squared. You see x squared in there, right? The threes are going to be gone because you have a three x squared, negative three x squared. You have an over one third. You're going to cross those out. You'll have a negative. There's your negative. You'll have an x squared. There's your x squared. You have this thing showing up again to a weird power. It is the same derivative, right? It's just this one is not explicitly written. This one is. With this function, you couldn't do this, so you won't be able to do this with your with your derivative in most cases because you can't solve for y. So that's the, the beauty of implicit, is that this is just as valid as that is. Just as valid. So we do this, step one, I guess there's only one step. Oh wait, step two, solve for dy dx. So write a step two on your paper somewhere. Step two is solve for dy dx. Step two is solve. Okay, guess what? That's it. Uh, that's implicit differentiation. If you have this idea down, you have implicit differentiation down. Uh, now, is it going to get tougher? Of course. Yeah, because we're going to incorporate things like chain rule, things like the product rule, things like quotient rule, which you can all do. It makes the algebra nasty. The calculus is not hard. The algebra is, yes, difficult in some cases. Would you like to try some examples to see this? Yes. I thought you would. Okay, let's take a look at just a few of them. Uh, first one I want to start off with is this one. <laughs> I say find dy dx. So if we want to find dy dx, that means, of course, we're implicit right here. There's no way we're solving that for y. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Solve that for y? Not a chance. 
So we're not going to solve that for y. That would be ridiculous. Good thing we have implicit differentiation right now. So implicit differentiation says, all right, why don't you go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. I want to see your work on this stuff. Show me your ddx's. Just don't forget both sides. Don't forget that. Now, let's look at the right-hand side. That's going to be the easier of the two in this case. Uh, what's ddx of 4x to the fifth? How much is that? Yeah, so don't forget the stuff you already know how to do. Don't let that leave you. Now, this is where we get to be kind of careful, right? If we have ddx of 3y squared plus sine y, you know how to take the derivative of this piece. You know how to take the derivative of this piece. Just be aware, you're dealing with, what are you dealing with, x's or y's here? Y's. Those are functions of x, which means that when you take a derivative, you will get a dy dx. Are you clear on that? Every time you touch a piece of your function that has a y in it with a derivative, you get a dy dx. Every time because of the chain rule. I'm going to stop showing you this right here, this whole chain rule idea. We're just going to do things like this. Check it out. 3y What's the derivative of 3y squared? 6y. Great. 6y what? Did you take a derivative of a y? Did you? Then do a dy dx. The reason is, again, you would have a chain rule. Chain rule would say, bring down the exponent, multiply it, take one away from it, that's the 6y, but then multiply it by d dx of y, right? That's what we have over here, d dx of y, that is your dy dx, and that's where that's coming from. How many people feel okay with 6y dy dx? If no, do you guys have questions on that right now? This part is coming from the same idea as this right here. It's the chain rule. You bring it down, you subtract derivative of the inside, and that's what we're doing. Derivative of the inside in this case is d dx of y. That is dy dx. That's that piece. You need that piece, otherwise you won't be able to solve for your derivative. You with me? You gotta have that. So we need that. Uh, plus, because we have a plus here. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. 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 Okay. So we have cosine of y. Is that it? Times dy dx. You took a derivative of something that involved the y. That means dy dx. Again, if you want to see this, this would be the chain rule. You'd go cosine of y. Leave the leave the inside alone. D dx of the inside, but that's just a y. That's dy dx. That's why we're getting that thing. That's where that's coming from. Do you see where it's coming from more now? Yes. I'm just curious on how, like, because the derivative is defining the slope. How would you find the slope of that? That's a good question. Let's solve for this, and I'll ask you that. I actually have a couple examples later on that will illustrate okay. what you do for that. So we're we're getting there right now. I just want to get you handled on on the derivative <coughs> part itself, okay? Who? Oh, oh man. What do you got to do now? Yeah, you got to solve it. So when you solve for a variable, when you solve for a variable, you get all your variables to one side, right? Then you try to combine like terms, and you try to factor until you get just one of them, and then you divide. And that's how you basically solve for a variable. Our variable here is dy dx. So get all your dy dx's to one side. Basic algebra here. Calculus is done. You're done. You've done the calculus correctly. Now it's algebra. So you see your dy dx here, your dy dx here. That means you're going to factor. So you're going to have to be good at factoring. If you factor that out, you get a 6y plus 